Welcome to this bonus episode of From the Horse Box. And to put this into context for our country podcast, we are on the eve of the Bridge Teaching Day to raise money for St Mary's Church in Overton on Dee in North Wales. And the day is organised by the Friends of St Mary's. And I've been lucky enough to have permission to record a chat with Andrew Robson, who is one of the best bridge players there are, and who's come to teach tomorrow in our village hall, a hall full of people. So thank you, Andrew. Great pleasure. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I know you're, I've done my research, you're a world-class bridge (laughs) player, and it took me ages to type out all your titles and championships that you've won. Um, Since being a junior, there were two prestigious titles as a junior, and then you went on to win three Cap Gemini championships, seven Gold Cup wins, um, the Risinger, the first Briton to win the Risinger trophy in, a, in the United yes, States. Yes, that's right, yeah. Twice. Which championship are you most proud of? Very good question. Actually, uh, back in 1991 in Killarney in Ireland, the European Championships, I had just broken onto the uh, open circuit from being a junior junior in bridges up to 25 and I, I was, wasn't very confident quite raw and uh, things went really well and we won it for the British team with a record margin my partner Tony Forrester and I were sort of the spearhead of the team and it, 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 I think that's my finest you know that's what I remember uh, uh, perhaps as being the zenith of my career maybe that's awesome now, just to carry on from, this is the fourth time you've been to Overton Village Hall, isn't it? And I know my father-in-law, Peter Roselli, who loves playing bridge, is always delighted to get a booking with you because, you know, you're so in such high demand. Well, it's always lovely to come up to this part of the world. I mean, I was actually born and brought up in Chester, so uh, not too far away. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, so it's it's a special area for me, this, and it's always lovely to do do stuff with uh, with your father-in-law, yes. Oh, that's great. Um, in Overton, we have a, a, a lovely village and there's lots of um, businesses on the high street. Is that similar to where you come from? Uh, now? Now, well, now I live down in Wiltshire, actually. Quite rural. I mean, more rural than this, actually. Um, so you're not in a village or...? Uh, well, I am. It's in yeah. a village called Clench, funnily enough. Um, and it is glorious, actually. We're looking over the Pusey Downs hills and it's beautiful, yes. So countryside is Countryside. Something. I love countryside. Love love walking in the countryside, maybe even riding a bicycle sometimes. So how did you start um, playing bridge? Is something your family... Talk. Yes, absolutely. Uh, my my parents who are, are still playing a uh, social bridge, and they taught my brothers and I. I've got two younger brothers, and we all played en famille when I was you know quite young. Really, I, I I didn't take to it straight away. It was a bit of a drudge having to play bridge after supper. But I do remember uh, that. There, were, there was a mobile library. I don't know if you remember mobile yes, libraries do, back do. in the day. And I had one extra t- ticket for a book. And I, and I, I was, the mobile library was about to pull off. And I just sort of saw uh, Learn Bridge or something like that by, I think, Terence Reese. And I sort of grabbed it without really thinking. This was a bridge was a game which I thought was a little bit dull, and I didn't really know what everybody made a fuss about. But we played it in the family, fine, whatever. And I started to read it, and actually, I realised what an incredible game it is, and it has been ceaselessly fascinating to me ever since. And that's probably nearly fifty years ago. Well, I I'm interested to know the fascination because I know I'm not a bridge player, but. I know the the whole world of bridge has its own dynamism and and and, and it's a whole language, it and is. this grand slam word that we all use in sport, a lot of these terms originated in bridge. In didn't bridge. They? There's absolutely. a lot of drama in the language. There's a massive drama in the language. Absolutely right. A grand slam is where you and your partner undertake to win all thirteen tricks, and then you've got to go ahead and do so. And if you lose even one out of the 13 tricks, then you've completely blown it and you get nothing. 
Yeah. It's a fascinating, fascinating game. And every hand of bridge you pick up, that's 13 cards that you have, you'll never pick up that same hand again in your whole uh, life and you have to try to describe those cards to your partner. It's a very cooperative process. And, and, and then you, the two of you communicate and you set up a sort of contract, a target. And then you have to try to fulfill it uh, against the opponents who are trying to stop you. So it's a fascinating blend of cooperation with your partner and competition with, with, the, uh, with the opponents. So a lot of joy comes in through your partnership. Absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. It's a very cooperative game, yes. And does it work for husband and wife, or is that... Well, a, that's a very good question. sometimes and not others. Uh, I think one can say that it works sometimes and not others. Mm. Yes, um, but some of the best partnerships are husband and wife, but it, of course it can be fractious. I think... Less so. Stereotypically, in the past, you know, we've seen these sort of cartoons of big, big rows between. But I think, uh, in fact, there was a famous occasion back in 1920, I think, uh, where the, the the husband made a what the wife considered to be a bad uh, bid, and uh, then the wife criticised him, and he objected. And she went to get a gun and shot him. No kidding. In America, the Bennets, I think they were called. Yes, and she got acquitted. She got acquitted because the... It was justified, was it? The judge said that, yes, the judge thought uh, that it was justified because he'd done something very bad. But actually, I'm not sure he had done something quite as bad as, uh, anyway, I'm sure it's a bit apocryphal and it's checked, the story's changed with over the last hope, hundred years. I hope we don't have any of this in the I think it's most tomorrow. unlikely we'll be playing in a totally, totally fun, relaxed way. So tomorrow, when you're faced with 120 people of mixed ability, how, as a teacher with Bridge, are you going to cope with all their different abilities so that they all enjoy it? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. I mean, obviously, I've done this quite a lot in the past, and so I do try to make it sort of multi-layered so that I can reach out to as many people as possible. I mean, I'll lead them to a certain point, and then they'll have a go to see if they can get from that point on and then I'll then I'll sort of run through it all for them all together. So if they're struggling a bit, it won't matter that much, to be honest with you. So we all, we'll all have a lovely day. That's a huge skill, and that's I suppose comes from your teaching. Yeah, I've done, I, yeah. I mean, I, I yes, yeah, so that if I hadn't discovered bridge, I'm sure I would be a, a maths teacher in a secondary school somewhere. So your maths ability is quite strong. I'm naturally quite numerical. Yes. Yes, I think in terms of numbers a lot. Bridge is quite a numerical sort of, very logical game as well. Was it picked up at school that you were naturally, uh, how did it manifest itself at school? You mean your the bridge? Skill, your, your particular talent, did uh, it come out in any way? Yeah, I mean, I started a bridge club at my uh, secondary school, Abingdon School, and we played sort of matches with other other schools and uh, played in the inter-schools tournament and it was sort of fairly clear fairly early that I was you know I, I had a bit of a talent for the game which is quite lucky because I wasn't I didn't do particularly well at school I you know my my headmaster able but idle was uh, one comment that I remember um, yes and I I, I loved I, I did three things when I was growing up. I, I played a lot of tennis, played for the first team, played a lot of golf, and I played a lot of bridge. And actually, uh, that stands you in reasonably well, uh, good stead for your later years, those three pursuits. So what was the watershed that you decided to make a career out of bridge? Very good question. Well, I did my PGCE uh, and started doing some, some supply teaching in Bristol and uh but bridge was sort of taking over i was playing you know sort of county level bridge and i was also on the junior uh national squad and um slightly london centric or certainly was at the time and so i felt if i was going to make that extra level uh, I, I was probably going to have to move to london and my 
partner and I, we were part of the of the team, the British team that won the World Junior Championships back in the late eighties, and I it, it sort of was becoming clear, not in any particular moment of epiphany, but just that that this was something I was really good at, and I I needed I I, I needed for my own self to try and push it to, to the limit. So I was really motivated to to be the best player I could be, you know, the b- best young player in the country. And and so that took pride of place and everything else sort of had to... How does the um, making a living side of it work in Bridge? Is it sort of like sponsorship? Yeah, very things? good question. Um, in the... Back in the day, people used to play bridge for money, sort of gambling, gambling clubs in London, Crockford's and places like that. But that's really gone. Very few people play high stake bridge these days. So what the top players do, I don't do it as much as they do at all, actually. I don't really play sponsored bridge. Um, So I get my, you know, source of income from, from teaching uh, and running a bridge school and writing and writing, you know, the Times and uh, Money Week and Country Life. Uh, so that's how I do it. But most of the top players, they um, exactly as you say, it's sort of a patron situation where a, a, a weaker player who's got uh, plenty of uh, dosh will hire yeah. these uh, these professionals to play on his or her team and then hope to win tournaments. So that's how they do it, yes. But, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg. Bridge is an amateur game. 99.9% of bridge players, you know, they're not making their revenue from bridge uh, at all. I've read about, um, you know, the bridge is played all over the world. You travel all over the world to play these championships. Is it a very glamorous life? Is it very, you know, black tie and champagne and the the glamour? I mean, I have definitely played in tournaments which are quite glamorous where it's dinner jackets and champagne and lots of people watching. But the reality is uh, that most of the time you're playing in some big hall, uh, rather unglamorous and... um, It'll be very glamorous tomorrow. Oh, definitely glamorous tomorrow in Overton on D. But uh, the, the, the tournaments that one goes to, are, I would say they're fairly low on glamour. And, and it's, not, it's not a game that people watch that much. So you're playing at your own tables and it's not, there's not a sort of throng of kibitzers, as they're called, spectators watching, really. Although because of the internet, quite a lot of the top matches are now online so that you're playing face-to-face bridge but there may be a thousand or two people watching online so that works quite well i mean the internet has been very very good for bridge Uh, during lockdown lots of people spent most of their days playing bridge online yeah i mean to have all that time at your disposal i suppose it's similar with the cruise ships you have people with time so bridge works well on the cruises, have you definitely? Done any I've, of that? I've done a couple of cruises before. I had, uh, you know, I got married and had children. I did a couple of cruises. Yeah, they're, you know, they're pretty fun places. But uh, if it's an all sea day, you've got to organise lots of bridge for people. And uh, if it's a, if if the sea's uh, churning a bit, then you you're standing and swaying and feeling a bit mm. distinctly queasy as you're trying to teach them how to play fourth suit forcing or something uh, Aris, do, do remember that yeah but it's something you might do again. might do it might do it yeah i mean it's, i love traveling so i might very it's a great way to combine you know you usually get a free berth or something as long as you run the bridge when when the when the ship is at sea so uh if it's an interesting tour i certainly did a couple of interesting tours to vietnam i remember really i thought it was a wonderful place round india as well uh, so, so yeah. So bridge is an international language. With bridge all of and this. music, I think, are the only truly sort of international languages. I mean, you can play bridge with someone, and you have no actual words in common, and yet using the language of bridge, you uh, you 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 can communicate. So you can partner these people with whom you cannot talk. It's incredible, bridge. It really is. You, I know you're one of the glitterati, but <laughs> you must have met some of the uh, um, Omar Sharif. Oh, yes, I used to play a bit Bill with Gates. Omar. Yes, I actually, um, B- 
Bill Gates asked me to play when he came to London, Did and you? I couldn't. Not many people have you know, you I've had, him had to turn him down because I was running a charity bridge event at the Peruvian embassy that evening, yes. Um, and uh, but, but Omar, I played in a couple of tournaments with Omar. He's great, Omar. But you have, you have to do it his way, or you had to when, when he was around. He, he, a strong character. Pretty strong character. Pretty strong character at the table. And if you, if you deviated from the way he thought was, mm. was the way, he, he, he wasn't happy at all. But he was a lovely, lovely man. Very, very generous. I, I've been to casinos. I don't really like casinos, is the truth. But bridge players, sort of, many of them do like casinos. And Omar used to take me to casinos two or three times. And when he's, when he's winning... You know, he's handing out big sort of tips to the croupiers. And, you know, by the end of it all, he's come back with a very small amount. But when he's losing, he's just piling in the money. Uh, and he loses, he used to lose a fortune. It's not surprising he had to take on so many B B list movies to, to, to make up the dosh that he would lose in casinos. So he was really addicted to the game. He was, he was. He had a very addictive personality. But he was such a lovely, generous man. I mean, I... I've been f- several meals with with Omar, and he'll arrive at uh, sort of ten o'clock in the evening, and um, he'll still be there, you know, leading the wonderful conversation till about four in the morning. And the w- waiters and waitresses, you would think, would be very impatient with Omar uh, not leaving, and they had to stay. But he'd give them all huge tips, and everybody was very happy. So he was a very big character. I mean, how much does this sort of um, psychological um, uh, presence, a presence on the table affect the play? Someone who's ultra confident and projects themselves? Yeah, really good question. It, it, that must have a big effect. Really good question. You have to slightly bluff your confidence even if you're not really feeling confident. It is part of it. It really is. Absolutely. Yeah, you have to pretend that you're right on top of it. You're completely in control. Often you're playing in a, a near hopeless contract. And maybe that's you, it. That's one of the things, isn't it? You have to lose with uh, glory. You There's definitely have to lose with glory, thing. but you mustn't. You mustn't convey the impression you're no, losing until no. it actually happens. The Italians are brilliant at doing that, actually, because they're a really strong bridge playing nation. That's very interesting. Yeah, they, they'll fight like tigers. Uh, they're they're very bold, uh, stereotypically, but it's also true. Very bold bidders but very, very tigerish card players fighting for every trick. And it's amazing what they can pull out of the bag, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Amazing. Now, I read somewhere about a couple employing a, um, a golfing coach to help them with the psychology side of playing, even though the golfing coach didn't know anything about the game. To Yes, I think that... Uh, but this positivity. Yeah, absolutely. It is really important. I think that the English women's team hired a a sports psychologist who I'm not sure she played bridge to to exactly to address one second because it is very important you're in the right frame of mind for a big match you know you've got to have slept the right amount eat the right foods um, so that you can play your very best it is mainly a game about making mistakes at the top level or avoiding doing so you're not trying largely you're not trying to be brilliant you're just trying to avoid sillies do you think you've um, managed to make Bridge um, a, not take over your life? What other interests have you besides Bridge? Uh, absolutely important not to be too Bridge obsessed, um, although I still love the game. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I, I love living in the countryside, you know, long walks, cycle rides, uh, Absolutely. Can you tell me a bit more about this hill walking? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I do. Um, I've always loved walking in the hills. I, sadly, it nearly cost me my life. I was. Uh, uh, this is over twenty years ago now. I was walking on my own uh, one February morning in uh, the Lake District, and I very unwisely took a route that is I'd forgotten, but I remembered later, too late is a bit of an accident black spot. And I slipped and fell on an on a anti-camber rock called Broad Stand. And uh, I fell a long, long way, a long way, more than 100 foot onto Scree. 
and I and I bent to pick myself up, and and I, and I and I and I could see that I was very badly damaged, and I couldn't move anything at all. So I, after a brief pause to sort of assess the situation, uh, I, I shouted for help, and eventually two very nice people from the Open University came. And this is before most many people had mobile phones, and where reception was very iffy. Luckily, one of them had a mobile phone. Luckily, it worked. They rang the mountain rescue service, and when the mountain rescue service heard where I was, they knew exactly what had happened to me. They sent the full team out and a helicopter, which actually couldn't land where I was, so they had to they had to put me in a, a flatboard. Yes, and walk me down and then all the way up to the top of the highest mountain in the country, Scorfell Pike. And it was too windy for the helicopter to, to land. So so it hovered and I was winched up into uh, into the helicopter and taken to the hospital. I mean, unbelievably lucky and grateful to everybody for, for basically saving my life. I didn't think I didn't think my life was in danger that day. And I think I've heard people say this before you just don't think that you the survival instinct kicks in. But as the months and years even the have gone by I realised just how many things had to go right for me to have survived that yeah if you'd have been left there they I'd have still been be there any, now yeah because I wasn't on a path or anything like that so yeah very very fortunate yeah Godly. I wasn't expecting that story. but I still That's love the, still love the hills it hasn't put you off it's in my blood yes so tomorrow for everybody coming to the hall, do you have any advice for keen bridge players in Overton on D as some sort of motto or something that might inspire them or help them tomorrow? Well, I mean, bridge is the most fantastic game at whatever level you play. You don't have to be a brilliant player to enjoy it, unlike many other games. You really don't have you know, to be particularly accomplished. Just enjoy the challenge of every single set of 13 cards you pick up you'll never pick it it up again you know it's every deal is going to be an adventure and you know no one's going to be made to look foolish at all so it's just a bit of fun that we're all going to have together we'll learn everybody will take different things out of the day and we'll have raised money for an excellent cause uh what's not to like really oh thank you andrew for sparing the time to record this during your visit it's brilliant pleasure although i'm not a bridge player i'll be joining the team who are preparing the lunch and i'm looking forward to the drama of the day that bridge brings and the fun that it obviously brings i love the language and the ritual surrounding it incidentally have you ever read roald dahl's short story my lady love my dove i haven't well, that might be a treat for you. Oh. It's a mischievous Roald Dahl story. And I just wonder if Henry and Sally Snape are booked in for tomorrow. Ah. Oh.